Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about the new JSON columns available in Entity Framework 7. This is great when you need to save a specific type of data in an entity without creating another complete table or using a weird custom type. Now you can save a small stuff like details, tags, or whatever you want into a column that will contain this JSON structure and it will be automatically serialized by Entity Framework. The great thing is that it works with most of the of the providers of Entity Framework, whatever database you, you're using, because if there's now an native JSON type available, it will use the max bar chart available to save this JSON. So let's see how we can implement this and how we see this to use it. Okay, first things first, we need the latest version available of Entity Framework 7 and .NET 7 uh, for all these functionalities to be available for us. So keep keep updated, try to have the latest beta or the latest release candidate that is available or the release if you're already, if you're seeing this video by the time of release. So, okay, let's define a use case. Here I have my car entities, the same from last, last video's pro uh, project, maybe you can check it out. But okay, I have my car and I want to have the, the details of the car if it has these are used cars and I want it to I want to know if they have a scratch or a, a defect on the paint whatever any type of detail so normally what we, what we would do is we need to create an entity for it detail CS normally we could use also a, maybe a list of string of, of strings or something like if just to have the descriptions of every single detail that it has but right now in the framework 7 doesn't support native type collections like uh, we need to create an entity with properties inside so and and that can be serialized but it will not serialize if you use a list of string or integer or whatever so that type of stuff it's are it's not available yet uh, the same way that we don't have the data annotations for these implementations. But okay, let's keep going by creating our entity that will represent the details of the car. Namespace, database issues, models. So this makes sense, I don't need the ID because I will not use relationships for this. It will not, it will be something without a table, it will be a column will that based on the provider that we're using for a database or database more uh, engine it will uh, vary to use an n bar chart max bar chart max or bar chart to max or whatever i maybe even the json type if it's available on, on on your database but okay now we have our detail entity and we can set it on our car so we set public public list of detail which we will be details i'll need to add this constructor here good practices here and okay now we have a list of details in the normal way that entity framework will work if we don't add anything to set up this entity is that it will create a, a, a table called details and there, it will make the, the, the whole relationship, pouring keys and everything to make this work when you, add a, when you add a car. And it will work almost the same way, but with relationships that will, re, that will require a cascade deleting and a lot of stuff, right? So we don't need that. Let me change this to models. No, it was wrong. And yes, we'll need that. So let's make this property here from the car an array of json that will contain the detail structure serialized in a column so okay this will be we if i don't do anything else it will be created as i told you as a new table with relationship to car as, because we don't need that we can make uh, on the unmodel creating or creating a, an entity type configuration uh, class uh, you can also define this on an entity type uh, configuration class but here for the example I will be doing it on the unmodel creating so let, let me show you how you can set up a child of your entity to be a JSON column so model builder we find that the entity that will be the parent the entity that owns the, the, the type. So in this case will be car. 
So now that I have this, I can set owns many because it has many details. You can set it as owns one. The, the owns, it's, it's something really uh, that's been available for a long time in Entity Framework. Uh, and you can use it to set up the structure of the navigation of the child properties on, on any entity that you have. So we have to define the own many details x details and then we have the navigation definition this will let let us define what's going to happen with the entity type that will be created for that child you can define it uh, the, in, uh, in a different uh, entity definition like outside or you can define it right here because we don't have an entity for it we need to like we maybe it works i, I haven't tried it like model builder entity Details, I think it will not work because this is not a real entity, a real table for it. For it. it cannot be tracked in any way. So you need to do it by uh, using the navigation parameter on the owns many of the, of the parent. So navigation. And here we can add some stuff. We can define a table and the table name that will contain it. But because we don't want a table, we have a new functionality that it's called to JSON, so navigation to JSON. So as you can see here, now the entity car owns many details and it will be accessed via JSON. It will serialize anything that you add into the details to be used as a JSON. That's it. It's as simple as that. And in the future, it's already on the GitHub actually, we should be able to use this as a data annotation on top of of your list. So if you have a list, you can add the data on the annotation JSON probably, and it will do the, the same thing. So you don't have to define if it's a table, you just put it there and it's really simple. And it, because it's from system data annotations, it will not represent a dependency inconvenience if you have multiple layers because it's coming from system and it's available on the .NET standard. So it's great when we, I'm, I'm hoping we, we will have the data annotation sooner. So great, now that we have our definition of how it's going to be accessed, let's try this out. I already have here an add mockup data uh, script. It will add 100 entities. And yeah, like it should work the same way. I'm just adding a lot of details to this and we will see on the database how this is serialized. And then we will try to request some data so we can test this out. So, okay, let me just clean up my, my project just in case. Dot net run. If it has an issue, sorry, I just de developed this. So great, it seems like everything worked. And uh, uh, I had on my on my, my constructor the ensure delete and should ensure created and then add mockup data. So I will always have new mockup data whenever I instance my database. But here I have my database. As you can see, I already had some requests to it. And yeah, we have here our cars. And as you can see, the, the details column, it's adjacent that contains the structure of my detail uh, model that I have on my models folder. And everything seems to be working, uh, working fine. Now I have my cars. I don't have any more uh, tables or unnecessary tables with that I don't have any many more relationships to it. And it's a really small set of data that actually doesn't have dependencies if I delete anything, or even you can have different structures inside. It's more dynamic. You don't have that tidiness that we have with the relationship with the relationships on a database. So great. And that's it. You see how easy it is to convert a child entity into a JSON that doesn't require a table, relationship, constraints, and all that stuff that we have in relation, rela relational databases. Now we have dynamic data structures that we can preserve on a column. Great for when, when we don't want to have migrations or we just need to save a couple of values or very structural changing data that might change in the future and then you don't want to mess up with the structure of your database, your relationships and everything. So it's really cool and it has all the features that are available by using tables. Right now with the release candidate, it has some issues and bugs that are going, that are being solved. 
But by the final release, you should be, be able to run all the link statements are you, that, that you're used to use uh, with your entity framework applications. So that's our wrap up for this topic. So don't forget to press the like button. If you like this video, I hope you enjoy it and you can try out these features and comment if you like to see more or you, if you have an opinion about this. Don't forget to see our older videos and subscribe if you want to see all the new ones. Without anything else to say, have a happy coding. Bye-bye.